company arrived at this remote place when the wind rose in such a way from the southeast that it was impossible to enter here in the Table Bay like it is normal in this case. The company, in the greatest anxiety, waited for the arrival of the day, threw the anchor, and found themselves run aground on two rocks. They therefore sent a boat of slaves to the shore, which arrived safely, but because of a dangerous surf, it could not return. The ship broke to pieces, through which they afterwards found out that 212 slaves, which tried to save themselves, died. The San Jose was a Portuguese uh, slave vessel on the way back from Mozambique with a cargo of slaves. The ship wrecked in our Cape of Storms and just lay there for about 200 plus years before we rediscovered the wreck. To our knowledge, this is the first full-scale effort to document a shipwreck uh, of a ship that was carrying slaves. It's so important because it can lead us to a host of information about what happened to those on board. It's important because it also allows us to recover the memories of those who were held as less than human underneath the bowels of the ship. Talking about the Middle Passage has taken on almost mythical proportions. The number of people who were lost, the tragedy in terms of what happened to Africa. We think the San Jose story is critical, very, very important, critically important to the, uh, to the story of, of humanity, actually. It really sort of touches anybody's soul. The slave trade is really one of the first and one of the clearest examples of how global considerations have ultimately shaped not only what happened in Africa, but also what happens in the New World. The image that most people have of a shipwreck is the, that of the Titanic. Um, the vast majority of shipwrecks um, don't look like that at all. The ship broke up completely, so there's very little that you can see that actually tells you it's a shipwreck. So you've got to look very carefully. There's one or two bits of timber, um, and in the ballast blocks that, that we've recovered most of, um, and um, mostly sand. Well, to participate in a dive is quite thrilling because when an object is found, you are first hand there, you get to see where it's found, the context it's in, and you just get to go up on board and say, oh, we found an artifact. <laughs> what really sort of moved me and, and gave me a sense of where I actually was and what actually happened at this site was Tari took us around these rocks and there, it was sort of embedded in the seabed and in lodged between these rocks was a huge wooden member. This was my first visual of the San Jose where so many people had lost their lives. I know it might sound a bit esoteric, but when I touched that wooden member, uh, it's like I was hearing the voices and feeling the souls of those individuals that, uh, that perished there. And I knew then that uh, I wanted to work this project and really help tell the story of the San Jose. For us archaeologists, even the smallest artifact can give us a clue into the story of the, the shipwreck. I mean, something as small as the pulley block can tell us about the type of vessel, where it was possibly used, how it was possibly used. The ballast tells us a story about the shipwreck. It can give us a date for shipwreck. Iron ballast was often used and carried in these ships, both as a trade item, to trade for slaves, but also because there was a need to weight down the ship because human bodies were not as heavy as other types of cargo. So it's a signature. I felt that it was really important to find some relics that would allow people to not imagine the enormity, but imagine the slave trade in a very personal way. This started as a project that was looking at a shipwreck site. But it's grown beyond that. What began as a search for a single ship defines an arc and a trajectory across the globe and across history that unveils a new way of looking at the slave trade 
and it unveils a new way of operating for museums and research institutions in the 21st century. Because it's an international project, we, we get to um, dive with people that, that we not, would normally not dive with, and uh, I quite enjoy that part of it. I think the collaboration is, is powerful uh, because it brings this diversity of perspective. You know, you got Africans in Africa, and you got African Americans in America that has totally different cultural experiences now, but we are converging on this common, common project that ties us and binds us together. This is the last frontier when it comes to exploring the Middle Passage.